One second. Hey, we're some guy outside, and this is our 1995 Jeep Cherokee. And on the back here, we have a Smitty built XRC rear tire carrier and bumper. And for the price point, it is the cheapest on the market, or at least it was five years ago when we got it. I'm pretty sure it still is today. It was designed in like the 90s, I think. It's huge, it has a lot of excess weight, a lot of excess space that doesn't work great for a lot of tire carriers, but we're gonna do a lot to change that today. And if you wanna see part two in this series where we build a table, put that griddle onto this carrier, subscribe. Oh, he's getting a phone call. President calls, that's a good idea. You should subscribe. It was designed to have a jerry can sit off to the left here and molly panels on the right. And you'll notice right in the center, when I take out what I have modified myself to be this rotopack carrier area, there's a big, big hunking steel box. And that hunking steel box is there to reinforce the frame of this carrier for the 37 inch tire rating that it has. That's what they say, but let me tell you. Now, what that does is eats up a lot of your storage space. And I've actually struggled to find jerry cans that fit in the area that's supposed to be your jerry can storage. So if you're not gonna have that jerry can sitting there, all this space really is wasted space. And I've kinda wanted to do this for a, pretty much since the day I got it. But my plan, take this, chop it in, because we've got a whole lot of dead wasted space that we can then move it in six inches. So with everything removed, I've done some high-level trigonometry and come to the conclusion that we will have to uh, very specifically use an angle grinder and a cutting disc to cut the shit out of this, this, that, this, and that, here, here, there, and there. Um, and then we'll be able to uh, liposuction this shit. So, yeah. This, the back of where this tire starts hanging is about six inches off of where the bumper hanger is here. This is two inches wide. There's about six inches of dead space here. I want to bring this in so the front face here is flush with the front face of this bar. Bring us in about four inches. Um, pretty much gonna have to cut everywhere this back face is welded onto the main arm here, including these two arms here, because there's no bar going between it. It's just a box welded into the tube. So I'm gonna mark it up and we'll get cutting. As you can see, we've cut away a lot of the weight, a lot of the extra molly paneling and stuff like that. So we're pretty much down to the skeleton. Now, I'm gonna start modifying this. I wanna take it down to about two inches, so it's the same width as this crossbar, but because there's a little bit of offset between the bar, the bar and the tube here, so this is gonna be about two and a half inches that we're gonna cut right from about this triangle all the way up to here. So we still utilize all the bolt face because don't want to have to re-drill all that. And hopefully we'll get it to sit about flush like this. So time to get back to cutting.
All right, we got it chopped up, kind of jerry-rigged it in place. We are cutting a lot of the support structure out. We're also cutting a lot of weight out and a lot of, of steel. Part of that is for weight. Part of that is so we can tuck it in closer. So I am probably going to be adding a little couple of gussets and stuff to some scrap metal pieces, you know, here and there, just to try and stiffen it back up, give it that rigidity that we took away. As you can see here, we've added just a little bit of reinforcement, a little 90 degree bracket, because we did thin this out a whole lot, which so be a lot of stress added to this. Adding a little bit of reinforcement is not gonna hurt, and we're still gonna be losing a lot of weight from all the stuff we've cut off, so. I'm not gonna waste your time showing you how I'm cleaning up all this welds. You know what a grinder is. Then we'll move on to painting, and This is such a bad design. There's just kind of like a free-floating, faceless nut on the inside tucked in here. It's MIDI built. Why? So you just saw me weld in this piece permanently into the bottom under the uh, tire carrier hinge setup and Smittybilt has this. This is a spare one I received um, because they had to send me quite a few packages before I actually received all the parts to make this thing install years ago when I first got it. So this piece right here is just free floating in there but the second you actually torque it down bends just like that which is why I had to uh, freaking weld the thing in there. And the second thing is it looks like there was a flat edge, like it's supposed to retain against a, some part of the uh, wall in there, but it just it spins. There, it isn't retaining against anything. Let's give that one one more try. Harbor Freight Welder to the rescue once again. Now, there's a couple ways we can go about painting this thing now that we have it all built up. We could go to a really fancy place and spend a lot of money and have them powder coat it. Or we could go down to Home Depot, spend $7.99 on a single can of this undercoating, of which there's probably 10 cans worth already on this Jeep. So let's just make it paint match, if you know what I mean. This isn't actually going to paint match. Now you're going to want to set up a really nice paint booth. And by that, I mean a foldable table out in your driveway. And you're going to want to have really good conditions. And by that I mean not raining. So let's paint it. Montage time. the next day.
this project is not over. This is the first part of the XRC tire carrier rebuild, and I just want to give you some background here. I bought this about six years ago now, and I have not been a happy customer since. About a year ago, I got this idea in my head of, I don't want to replace it, but I want to rebuild it. So I made a weird couple little videos of trying to be honest and give like fair pro and cons. And they're mostly just cons, and they felt really complainy. Hi, I'm some guy, and this is my Jeep. And these is why you should not buy the Smitty Built XRC bumper. Um, so I never actually posted those videos, but I might integrate them into the series somehow. Um, not sure how it's going to look until it's done, so we'll see how it goes. For this project, uh, you know, we've cut out about five, four and a half inches of the excess leverage, so I think that's going to help reduce stress on our suspension. I also think it's going to help with the clearance, exit clearance of the vehicle. I think aesthetically, having it closer to the body rather than all that space of empty, empty gap space that did nothing. You couldn't fit most cherry cans. You couldn't fit any of the like modern roto packs. Um, you know, there wasn't an ability to have what we're going to do in part two here, which is build a tray table or a tailgate table. There are no third party companies supporting this XRC. Even Smitty Built doesn't do a whole lot, if anything extra stuff for the XRC tire carrier. So follow along if you want to see the next parts in these series. Like, subscribe, comment down below if there's any tips, tricks, or things that you saw in this video that you think I could have done better. I'm always happy to learn. So remember, follow along here, follow along on Instagram, some guy underscore outside, and if some guy can do it.